Now we're let's go on to some business items. So Jacques, I think we have some opportunities and perhaps a project for the spotlight. We do have a project for spotlight. Uh, Gail, Galen Smith is is going to do uh, a project spotlight for us on a project that he's been working on for uh, quite a bit, a bit of time now. And um, so I'm going to turn this over to him. It's an it's a very very interesting uh, project. Uh, you know, and it's in the uh, it's actually in the uh, uh, it's a variety of different technologies, but the Intel space that does some stuff going on in healthcare and so on. And I'll let I'll let Galen talk about that in a little more detail. Okay. Well, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. <laughs> let me let me share my screen. Okay, so for where people want to go when uh, when they can travel again from COVID, uh, I am in lovely Vero Beach, Florida, and all my friends over in Tampa are insane at this point. And, <laughs> and, I bet they are. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about this project that I'm running uh, or working on. Um, so this one, I'm, I'm the capture manager on this, and uh, I've been working with this client now for on this particular project for almost five months. And I, I say capture managers have the easiest job description in the world. I mean, you're going to win the deal on the best possible terms for your client. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, no fancy. Here's what I do and why I do it. You just win deals. So a little bit on the procurement background. Um, and if, if I'm acronym label for or acronym heavy for you folks that don't do federal contracts, just let me know. But this is a very large multiple award, multiple, multiple agency IDIQ contract that will be used to deliver uh, all sorts of professional services to the federal government. Uh, when I say large, uh, we're talking a ceiling value on this contract vehicle will be in the tens of billions of dollars over its lifetime. So it's a, it's a big deal to win this contract or at least get on the contract. Uh, by an IDIQ, you don't get any work um, uh, by winning the contract. You actually have to then compete for task orders. So my, uh, my role is to actually win the contract vehicle and then subsequently uh, we'll compete for task orders. There is a draft RFP out. It's been out for a while. It's assumed to be about 95% complete, maybe even 99% complete. Uh, and that's allowed us to do a lot of pre-proposal work um, ahead of the actual release of the solicitation. The procurement officials have restricted communications. And, and what that means is you're only allowed to talk to the procurement officials here. So you can't go to your client or other potential users of this agencies that will use this contract and attempt to you know, influence how the solicitation looks like, what comes out, how it's evaluated. Uh, we're not allowed to do that. And if you do go to a government client and you try and bring it up, they're li likely to shut you down very quickly because they don't want to run afoul of the federal acquisition regulations. So our, our, our communications are very channeled on, on how we can talk to uh, the government about this solicitation. Real high interest in uh, industry, uh, industry on this one. Uh, the government has said they think they will receive hundreds, if not a thousand proposals. So lots of folks out there tracking this and that will bid on this. And, and that does have to do, does have in some influence on the way we're shaping. Uh, this is a prime only bid. So no teammates, you know, your qual, you've got to bring the quals, you bring all the requirements as a prime. Uh, you can't use uh, subcontractors qualifications. So the award, and the evaluation criteria, there's a multi-step award process on this but the first thing is there's a series of go no requirements you must pass all go requirements um, or you're not even considered in the other area so if you fail in one go area you're out of the competition there are almost a dozen um, sow task areas if you're a large business as they define a large business here over a certain size standard you must qualify in all task areas uh, smaller businesses, other than large businesses, they can qualify in a subset. But our client in this case is a large business, and we have to qualify in all 10, or we cannot get an award. And then finally, for award, uh, for award and evaluation criteria, there are certain organizational systems and certifications that are either required or they're highly, evalu highly valued. So if you have a certain organizational system that's in place, um, 
you can you'll get a, you can get a higher evaluation. It's more highly valued. So th th that's kind of the basics of what this looks like. It's definitely an interesting uh, opportunity. Uh, yeah, very interesting one. So what have we been doing in for capture for pre-RFP pre -RFP actions? Now we've done, um, you know, the typical capture stuff. So I'm just going to hit the highlights here. So I've divided it into three areas, strategic, operation, and tactical. Uh, I always you know, you know, tell people that, you know, this is not a, a, a goodness uh, or uh you know, a hierarchy that, you know, somehow strategic is better than operational and it's better than tactical. You've, you've got to think and be able to operate on all three levels. Uh, a, a strategy that you can't operationalize or an operational plan that you can't actually execute are useless. So for shaping and positioning, what we've done is we've joined and we are active in a number of industry advisory councils. Um, these councils are still able to provide feedback to the government, to the procurement officials. Uh, we're working within those. Because of the sheer number of companies that are interested, no single company is going to get a lot of traction and, and you know, really shape this to their advantage or to the disadvantage of others. <laughs> so in these industry councils, we actually form co coalitions in these uh, and, and try and shape it with others. Understanding eventually at the, at the uh, task order level, they are going to be competitors. Um, we have launched a, a major marketing campaign to enhance our general brand awareness uh, with the procurement officials and uh, with future uh, contract users. So we're out on um, out on like the, the local drive time. Uh, drive time radio in the morning. This is all out of Washington, D.C., if I didn't say that. So we're out there on WTOP in the morning if you're interested or if you know about the D.C. area. Uh, we're in a variety of different other uh, locations. So our name is out there. And our name is out there, too. So they associate us with the type of services that are being provided by or will be provided on this contract. So when I see our name uh, and in our proposal, they don't say, who are these guys? And we didn't know they did that. Instead, they say, yeah, we know who they are, and this is in their sweet spot. And then finally, for shaping, we've actually leveraged and we are leveraging social media. Uh, we have, we know who the procurement officials are. We know who the potential users are. Uh, we have them on LinkedIn. We have them mm -hmm. on other on online forums. And, you know, we can't talk to them directly, but we know where they are present, and we are putting out... Um, technical thought pieces, in, in essence, online white papers, uh, expressing our position where we, you know, what's important in, in, in these services in the future. Again, we're not really trying to shape the acquisition here. This is about uh, letting them know where we think the emphasis ought to be in these technical areas. These are all up and running at this point, and I, I think we are gaining some traction on this one. So operational. Now, here the goal was to optimize our evaluation score. When we first looked at this, we realized that we either didn't have or we either didn't have or, or um, you know, the types of internal projects or certifications that we were going to need. Uh, so we actually stood up project teams to go gain those certifications ahead of the solicitation being released. They will both enhance our score. Uh, and in one case, they, it was a mandatory go, no go item. Those are on track and they will be in place before the solicitation is released. Uh, project teams that have done this are just super. Uh, they've taken this and they're running, running with it. Um, because of the broad and the large number of, uh, of professional services and technical areas, the particular client business unit that I'm supporting can't deliver all of these itself. So we had to get support, build and get support from the entire business, um, which means we had to figure out who's going to be, who's going to work with us. Uh, they have to participate and help develop these solutions to, to qualify in these task areas. And, and again, the challenge is there may be not there may not be direct line of sight from those supporting business units to their profitability. And so we're asking them to provide 
resources, uh, spend time to help us win a contract, but they may or may not, as an individual business unit, you know, see anything come out of. So it took a lot of effort to build this. Uh, I will give uh, the, the business unit I'm working with great credit for identifying these people and really working to get them on board. And then the final area is, is the tactical area. So because there's a draft out, we have been developing um, pre-RFP proposal sections. We pretty much are at the 80 to maybe even 90% on all the proposal sections at this point. Um, of course, when we see the final RFP, we'll have to go back and tweak it. Uh, but the one thing that I'd like to highlight is in the task areas, because we had so many other business units involved, uh, instead of rolling out a template or saying, okay, you guys, you know, go right to your task area and let us see what it looks like. We took two of the task area leads who um, have some gravitas within the organization, and they took on writing to those two task areas and we piloted this template with them. We got some really good feedback about, uh, you know, what they thought was usable, what they couldn't use. Uh, we pre-populated that. And as a result of their feedback, we modified the template for the task areas and have rolled it out to all the other task area leads. So. Fantastic, uh, Galen. It really is. Uh, very, you've taken a very sophisticated approach and uh, reduced it down to some really uh, uh, actionable things which are very practical. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. I think there's some uh, questions in the chat window. I think we have time for one or two questions. Yeah. Um, is someone looking at the chat window? They can perhaps read them out loud for us. Yeah, Mel, you could do that. Sure. So this is from Dan Toomey. It says, with so many likely bidders, how did you select end up with this client? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's one of those those things where we develop relationships with clients over a long yeah. period of time. Mm -hmm. and if there's needs to, to provide support on things they think are, are critical pursuits, they engage us to, to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, one, one thing I thought that was impressive about this is how, how much, you know, we're le leveraging social media in, in the it is, process. Yeah. I think that's that in and of itself is a very impressive ad, uh, attribute of this particular uh, pursuit. It is, it is. Is there another question? Uh, that is the only, oh, okay. sorry, here comes one from Pete Roman. Um, what about MBE, WBE, DVBE participation? <laughs> Seems like government procurements are always looking for that. Okay, so this was Acronym City. <laughs> so <laughs> this, this, uh, this, this procurement is divided up into uh, what they call other than small businesses, um, small businesses, and then there are parts of awards that will go to specific socioeconomic uh, uh, businesses that are, you know, classified, and they they may uh, make that. However, again, this is a prime only bid, so as a, we're not allowed to, or they don't evaluate subcontractor um, subcontractor qualifications. We have to bring it all as a prime ourselves. That said, we will have to do a small business. We do have to do a small business uh, utilization plan where we uh, provide, you know, meet targets in using small businesses to deliver the services. We will be tracked on that. And uh, you can be rolled off this contract uh, for non-performance. And that's an area of non-performance that you can be rolled off because of. Hmm. Wow, interesting. So they've carved out different aspects of this uh, acquisition into each of the different uh, 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 business set of sites as small businesses, women owned probably, and uh, and the Spanish businesses of other types. So, uh, Gail, I, I'm going to ask you, I'm this, I'm, this is actually very fascinating. I love what you're doing. Um, it'd be great if you actually write a short white paper as a news item for us in terms of your approach to capture. I, I really love it. It's a, it's a sophisticated way of thinking about it, but also very actionable and practical. We actually have one question, one more related to a white paper. So this is from Rick Harris. How are the social media technical thought pieces online white papers working? Are you getting traction? Yes, significant traction. We know we know the we know the head uh, we know the head procurement official on this, and he is commenting on our white papers. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, social media is a very powerful thing, and I think you, uh, the context that you, you have, you've been using it. Uh, makes it possible for you to share ideas um, in, a, in a in a way that, that they can be consumed, and even during the RFP, 
Well, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing the project with us.